In 2011, a young man from Chicago took the basketball world by storm, becoming the youngest MVP in NBA history. They called him the Windy City Assassin. The hope of Chicago, the future, but in the blink of an eye, that all changed. Uh, Collins out there oh, and all those teammates running in this with the injury we just talked oh, about the 26 goodness. games he has missed with an assortment of injuries. Derek Martell Rose was born on October 4, 1988 in Chicago, Illinois. His grandmother gave him the nickname Pooh because of his heavy semblance to Winnie the Pooh cartoon character back when he was a little kid. Though it seems Pooh had a childhood that was filled with honeys and all that good stuff, the place that he grew up in made it difficult for him to experience that kind of life. Rose was raised in the tough neighborhood of Englewood, one of the most dangerous areas on the southwest side of Chicago, where crime was almost clocking like an eight to five thing. In this surveillance video, shooting another man outside of an Englewood convenience store. Englewood sends two teenagers to the hospital. Police say a 16. The good thing, though, was that he got three older brothers to look after him. Dwayne, Reggie, and Alan kept him away from the streets and diverted his full attention into playing basketball instead. After learning the ropes, he took all the stuff that he learned from his brothers and brought it to the next level, which was why by the time he stepped foot at Simeon Career Academy in 2003, he was already generating a lot of buzz in the hoop scene from his own backyard and even beyond the borders of the Windy City. To protect Derek, not just from the violent street life that he's surrounded with, but also to the sketchy people that are looking to exploit his talents and jeopardize his path to the NBA, his brothers would monitor every person he came into contact with at all times, to the point that they would ask someone to tail Derek and spy on him, just to make sure that he doesn't get into trouble or any shady dealings. When I first knew that Derek was special, I just said to myself, you know, that he, he might have a, a great chance of making it out of here, it, only if he listens. How did you avoid staying out of a lot of the trouble that you could have ran into in the streets of Chicago. For me, my family was always there for me where um, I, I wasn't a bad kid. I went to school, came home, like played basketball the whole day, did my homework at night. Mm -hmm. Inside the court, Derek began to turn a lot of heads during his first two seasons in high school. Because although the varsity coach at that time had a long tradition of not giving any freshman a chance to play on his squad, he had no choice but to put Derek on the court simply because he was that good. He put up 18.5 points, 4.7 rebounds, 6.6 .6 assists, and 2.1 steals per game in his freshman year, which he then amped to 19, 5, 8, and 2.5 and on his sophomore season. And in both of those years, he led the school to city championships with a 24 to 1 record combined. Then, while playing as a junior and senior, he once again brought them to the mountaintop leading the team to back-to-back -back state championships, making Simeon the first Chicago public school to win two consecutive titles. Here's Rose. He's going to make a play. He's going one-on-one. The -on -one. the score! Needless to say, he ended his high school career with flying colors, bagging a bunch of All-American awards, including being named as Illinois Mr. Basketball in 2007 and third best high school point guard of the decade. With all the hype that he's carrying around following his stellar high school career, everyone knew that he's going to be a one-and-done player in the collegiate ranks. And even though he only spent one season at Memphis while playing under legendary coach John Calipari, Rose delivered and had one of the most underrated runs in college basketball history. Averaging 15 points, 4.7 assists, 4.5 rebounds and a steal, he led Memphis to a 26-0 start and claimed the number one ranking in the country, and during the big dance, Rose carried the Tigers all the way to the Final Four, which featured his matchup and big win against future rival, Russell Westbrook, where he racked up 25 points, nine rebounds, and four assists to punch a ticket to the NCAA Tournament Finals. However, his remarkable NCAA run would ultimately end against Kansas in a game where he missed a crucial free throw that could have iced the game.
Despite falling short in the NCAA tournament, it didn't stop Rose from getting selected as the number one overall pick in the 2008 NBA draft by his hometown team. 2008 NBA draft, the Chicago Bulls select Derrick Rose from the University of Memphis. Right off the gates, he showed why he has the potential to be the next big thing in the NBA as the 20-year-old tallied 16.3 points, 6.1 assists, while shooting 47.5% from the field to win the Rookie of the Year honors and gave the powerhouse Boston Celtics team a mini heart attack when they pushed the defending champs to an epic game seven in the first round. His second year in the league told almost the same tale as the Bulls finished with another 41-41 record in the regular season. However, the major difference though was the significant boost in his production, particularly in the scoring department, where he registered 20.8 points a ball game. And as a result, Rose was named as an all-star in just his sophomore season. But despite this, the Bulls got booted out in the first round yet again, this time against the prime LeBron James and the rest of the Cavs in five games. Realizing that Rose has the potential to become the top dog of the franchise, the Bulls did a major shakeup in year three in order to put him in the best position to succeed by replacing Vinny Del Negro with the former defensive strategist of the Boston Celtics in Tom Thibodeau. With Thibs calling the shots at the helm, the Bulls turned into hard-nosed defense-first team that would win a league-leading 62 wins in 2010-11 season. And at the same time, he was able to fully unlock Rose on an individual level as he averaged 25 points, 7.7 .7 assists, 4.1 rebounds, and a steal, en route to making him the youngest MVP in NBA history. While the personal accolades continued to pile up for D-Rose, the Larry O'Brien Championship trophy still eluded him. And although they finally got over the hump in the first round, the Bulls got slayed by a familiar foe, with new faces working on his side. Expectations were high for Rose following his MVP season, and on the opening day of the 2011-2012 lockout season, he delivered a banger to show the world and the entire NBA that he's ready to take over. Christmas Day, Rose left, Rose in the lane, Rose, good! Derrick Rose and the Bulls! Just like in the previous season, the Bulls finished atop of the East. But this time around, it seemed that they got it all figured out with a healthy former league MVP leading them to the promised land. Until they got hit with a blinding curveball. Looking to sweep you guys. You wanted us. You were crying out that you bypassed the, the harder team in Miami. Uh -oh, uh -oh, Rose came down bad on his left foot. Seems he has missed with an assortment of injuries and now holding a knee. With game one clearly in the bag for the Bulls against 76ers in the first round, something unfathomable happened. Rose's left knee buckled and gave way on the plant from a move that he has done a thousand times before. And at that moment, everyone knew that he and the Bulls would never be the same again. Without their best player, the eighth-seeded 76ers would eventually upset the Bulls in the first round in six games, and in the following year, Rose was forced to sit out the entire 2012-2013 season. Despite recuperating for a full calendar year, Rose's body kept betraying him every time he was about to make a comeback. His highly anticipated return in the 2013-14 season was cut short to just 10 games as he tore his right meniscus against the Blazers. Then, in the following season, his comeback attempt to full health was spoiled once again with another self-inflicted injury when he pulled his left hamstring late in the game versus the Raptors. Luckily, he was able to return just in the time for the playoffs. But while Rose and his crew would suffer another premature exit, thanks to Braun and company, he delivered a buzzer beater that would go down as one of the greatest clutch baskets in NBA history. That unforgettable moment would serve as the final high point of D. Rose's career in Chicago, because after a subpar finish in the following season, he was shipped off to the Big Apple in the summer of 2016. You lying.
As the old folks would say, a minor setback is a setup for a major comeback. And as for Rose, the road to redemption starts in New York. After a mediocre final campaign with the Bulls, everyone thought that he was done. But to everyone's surprise, Rose bounced back and had his highest scoring output since 2013, averaging 18 points a ball game. He was able to regain his speed. He got the spring back on his legs. But just as things started to look up for him, the injury bug caught him yet again, which forced him to sit out the remaining games of the 2016-17 season. With a fourth knee surgery on its way, there's no shame in throwing the white flag as far as Rose was concerned at this point of his career. I mean, he's already bagged more individual awards than most players that have ever played in NBA history. He brought glory back to Chicago and made the city relevant again, which is something that has been never done before since the time of Michael Jordan. And more importantly, he has already proven that he can play in the best league against the best players in the world. But see, great players don't easily fold like that, and as long as he still has something to give, Rose wanted to finish his story on his own terms. Despite being let go at the end of the season and signing with the Cavs the following year to team up with his longtime rivals, D. Wade and LeBron, in which he only played 16 games, Rose found his way back to his old mentor when they reunited in Minnesota. Acknowledging the fact that he's not the same player like he once was with the Bulls, Rose embraced the role of a reserve for T-Wolves in the 2018-19 season, and even though he's not getting the same amount of touches and minutes, he would always find a way to create a positive impact off the bench and deliver winning plays. Rose looks to go. Two seconds. Rose off balance. It doesn't matter because he drilled it. But whenever his number was called from time to time, Rose would always rise to the occasion. And this couldn't be more emphasized when he shocked the entire world on the night of October 31st, 2018. For the first time in his career, Rose would drop 50 points to finally put a stamp on his redemption story and shut down his doubters and haters for good. His short and successful stint in Minnesota allowed him to score a nice two-year, $15 million contract from the Detroit Pistons, and for the next three seasons, Rose has continued to thrive as a sixth man for the teams that he played in, while also sharing his vast knowledge and experience to the younger players as a veteran mentor. The basketball story of Derrick Rose is not just about the meteoric rise of a young phenom coming from the tough and dark streets of Englewood. It's about a story of how to keep getting up no matter how many times adversity struck you down. And this ain't even about his lost greatness. It's about the relentless grind that he put up, night in and night out, to make himself great again. Because at the end of the day, his legacy is not defined by the trophies and accolades but by his indomitable spirit, his resilience, and his profound impact on and off the court. Anyway, thanks for watching if you like this video and want to see more content like this. Be sure to hit that subscribe button. And until then, see you next time.